Mr. Your Trump. life is not on the line. Mine is. And you think that I, I think this is funny? I don't think it's funny whatsoever. So I, so I think, Your Honor, with all due respect, I think you so should show some respect. So we're going to take a five-minute break, and when we come back, the jury's coming out, and you need to call your next witness. Thank you. We are in recess. No, nah, you, you're not rushing me to judgment. I don't care what you're talking about. You were probably charged. Why? I mean, <clears throat> why would Judge Doro allow Jarrell Brooks Jr. to talk to her like that? You're watching Sight, Sounds, Flavors on. I can't even say the name of the channel. I mean, I watch the clip. This is what I do. I don't play two hours worth of trial footage and put a little background music or a giggle or two. I, and I'm not trying to like, look, I'm not trying to throw shade at other channels. But what I do is special. And what I do is special because you help it make special because of your comments. Your comments are a huge driving force of the Sight Sounds Flavors YouTube channel and everything else channel on YouTube. But what I do is I pick out these clips, a lot of times inspired by your comments because you kind of point me to them or sometimes like this one I find on my own. And then I, I watch the video and I have like a little clips library. And then I come and do the video like I'm doing now and totally unscripted, I can't even say the name of the channel in the intro because I just watched the clip before making the actual video. And I, and I just can't understand why Judge Dora would allow Gerald Brooks Jr. to speak to her like this. And I also don't understand why she's standing up. And I don't understand why he's standing up. And I don't understand why he's telling her that she should have respect for him seeing as he was charged with killing more than half a dozen people, murdering half a dozen people, and injuring 80, terrorizing a community, and then making a mockery of the justice system. And, and, and yet he is telling her to respect him. And he's not taken out to the other courtroom. He's not reprimanded. She says, let's take a five-minute break. Uh, you know, you're watching the Sight Sounds Flavors YouTube channel, you know, like the video. If you like it, subscribe, please ring the bell for notifications and leave a comment down below is what I was trying to say a couple minutes ago. But I just don't understand. I don't understand. Did you guys, by the way, hear that the Alex Murdoch trial may be getting a new trial? Because of jury tampering, allegedly. Mm hmm. I mean, I don't think something like that would happen here, but if Alex Murdoch, who more than likely murdered his wife and his son with a machine gun, because that's what the autopsy said it was an assault rifle, excuse me, a semi automatic machine gun. And could get a new trial where he obviously will not be taking the stand again and where his story will line up to the Snapchat video that was found at the 11th hour that basically made him look like a bald faced liar. Then it stands to reason that anything is possible in the American justice system. I mean, could we see Gerald Brooks Jr. with a successful appeal? Probably not. He has his, his uh, himself to thank. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I cannot even keep from just stuttering, just like going off on tangents. I don't understand. I can't get that visual out of my head. Judge Doro is standing, Gerald Brooks Jr. is standing. Gerald Brooks Jr. dishing it out to Judge Doro, Judge Doro taking it and then offering a five minute break. When which he should. Okay. You know, when I was growing up, my mom always told me that it was very rude to compare people. You know, oh, so-and-so would have done it this way, or so-and-so is like this, or so-and-so wouldn't have made that mistake. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Coke Zero, by the way, not regular Coke. Regular Coke is dang good, but Coke Zero is just as good. It doesn't have any sugar. It makes you wonder. Anyways, because if I could choose between Coke 
and Coke Zero, I choose Coke Zero. Isn't that crazy? I mean, that's how good Coke Zero tastes. But they don't sponsor the show or anything. I'm just saying. Uh, <clears throat> seriously. I mean, I was being serious about that. But seriously, with regards to this. What do you think would have been the situation? Even if, even if, even if the court had made a mistake. Because courts can make mistakes. Prosecutors can make mistakes. Defendants can make mistakes. We can make mistakes. Okay? So I'm not saying that. The judge was wrong if she made a mistake or if she, you know, spoke out of turn. Maybe she said something like, I don't know, whatever. But what do you think the situation would have looked like if Sue Opper had been in Judge Doro's position? Because I will tell you what I think, and I want to know what you think in the comments. What I think is that Sue Opper would have said, Mr. Brooks, and that is your name. She wouldn't have played along with any of this other, you know, third party, whatever he was saying. She would have said, Mr. Brooks, I apologize. I misspoke. End of story. Sit down. And she would not have stood up. When the judge stands up, a whole, and we can make a video on this too, because I feel like this is what happens when we do these videos. Like we, we, we kind of like, touch upon topics, subtopics that could easily be their own topics. When the judge stands up, unless the judge is fixing to leave, in other words, if, if it's like a minute or two before lunch, a minute or two before a planned, scheduled break or whatnot, but if the judge stands, it the whole point of the judge being on an elevated platform is so the judge doesn't have to stand. So that the judge, 24-7, while court's in session, st sits above the court. If the judge has to stand, that's like that's like overstating the obvious. Although it may not be obvious to certain defendants like Gerald Brooks Jr. The fact the judge stood, to me, is a weak look. A very weak look. If the judge spontaneously wants to leave, as we saw here, where the judge said, let's take a five-minute break. Or before, when the judge said, let me walk that back when she was going to send them out of the room with the two pictures. <laughs> That's the bad thing about Coke Zero. Is that um, it's a bad look. Because she's fleeing. You know? She's having to stand up when she's already on an elevated platform. She's allowing the defendant to stand up when he should not be standing up. The only time people stand up in courts if there's a little break or something like that, or if the judge is coming in or leaving. That's it. Nobody else should be standing. How many times <clears throat> did Judge Doral ask Terrell Brooks, I don't know, are you standing up? Or are you sitting down? Remember when he was like crouched, like, like slouched over the table? And she allowed that. Why did she allow that? So again, this is why I gave the judge a 97, not a 100. It's not a deal breaker. She still did a fantastic job. But she allowed for certain little habits that ended up becoming, you know, uh, you know, well, actually, I, I misspoke. She allowed for like certain little bad traits to become habits because he saw each other table a lot of times. He stood up a lot of times. He barked at the court, as we saw here. When I say barked, I'm saying he was, you know, making very, very bold assertions against the presiding officer, against prosecution team, against witnesses, against law enforcement, where he should not have been able to do that. You know? I mean, we never we never saw O.J. Simpson do this. We never saw the guy from Beretta do this. I mean, these are high-profile defendants. We never saw Bill Cosby do this. These are high-profile defendants. Not to say that high-profile defendants are able to do what blue-collar defendants can't. It's just to say that even your high profile defendants who you would think would have like the biggest head and would think that the world owes them a favor and would think that they can do whatever they want because they have a lot of money. If they don't do it, if members of La Cosa Nostra, mobsters, John Gotti didn't do it, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, Carmine Persico, who was nicknamed the snake on the street, who probably had a hundred bodies to his name, didn't do it. Defendants don't do this. The Unabomber didn't do it. Uh, you know, what's the guy, the, the, the cannibal guy? Uh, 
um, Jeffrey Dahmer didn't do. I mean, no, no defendant does this. You know, Charles Manson, you know, who was like one sandwich short of a picnic basket. He didn't do this. You know I mean, so the reality of the matter is defendants don't do this, but he did. And she didn't, you know, you know, she didn't uh, even slap him on the wrists, much less hold him in contempt or put red tape across his mouth or put him into the other courtroom. She just said, you know, let's take five minutes. Let me walk that back. You know, it, it, it just created for bad habits. But I just cannot get that out of my head. Why is she standing up? Why is he standing up? Why is he telling her that she should respect him? Why is she not like just, you know, you know, just going off, taking him to town? And then you got to worry. And I was going to end it there, but, but then, but I, I can't because I can't, you know, a lot of the picture like stills that I use of Jarrell, there's a, a, a court officer in the background. Imagine how that court officer and all the bailiffs probably felt when they saw Judge Doro look this week. That is their boss. They work for her. And she's allowing this, this POS to totally walk all over her. How do you think that makes them feel? You know, in, in, in instances like this, Darrell Brooks Jr. owned the courtroom. So I ask you once again, how would it have been different had Sue Opper been on the bench? I think it would have been night and day. But what do you say?